everyone. Welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Now in today's video, I wanted to take you through a very exciting planetary event that's happening this year. It's the conjunction of Saturn and Ketu, which is happening in Sagittarius. And I'll quickly give you some dates. It's happening March through to January 2020. This is definitely one to watch and this is something that we'll watch together. So over the course of the year, I will be talking about this conjunction as we go through the monthlies. I'll keep you updated with my thoughts on this conjunction, but it's quite good and quite fun to have a go at interpreting this before it happens. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to structure this video into three parts. I'm going to take an overview of the conjunction itself. We're going to have a look at the dates and we're going to have a look at um, what's happening. I might even bring the camera over and show you what's happening on my screen. So that'll be quite interesting. The second part, I'm going to take you through my interpretation of how this is working globally in the collective, how this is going to play out, what this is going to mean for all of us. And then I'm going to take you through what it means for you personally. And that's always an important thing to know. It's like getting a weather report. So if you want to, there'll be links in the description below. Feel free to just click ahead to the bit that you need. Um, some of you who are pressed for time, you might just want to watch the what it means for you personally. And you can also get what it means for your house in the description below as well. I'm going to include that in written form in the description below this time. And I'm also going to include that possibly on an Instagram post as well. I think I will do it as an Instagram post. Uh, I'm getting the Instagram going again this year. I kind of started it towards the end of last year and it's something that I want to, to build. So let's take a look at the conjunction. This is, it's a really important conjunction. And I think a lot of people in the Vedic astrology community are talking about it at the moment um, because it is exciting and it's, it's definitely one to watch. So the exact dates that I'm going to give you, these I looked at them via true node calculations. I know that some people are giving um, the dates via, say for example, a mean node calculation and that's absolutely fine. Um, I work off true node. That's just one of the things that I do. Uh, but of course, as I grow as an astrologer, you know, I'll be experimenting a lot more. But in terms of true node calculations, I've got the dates, the 23rd of March, 2019 to the 24th of January, 2020. Uh, it's a really interesting conjunction. I've been looking at this. So I've got a note here, Jupiter joins the mix from 5th November, 2019. And he's kind of, Jupiter's kind of in the area. What I thought I'd do is I'd draw a bit of a diagram and and then I can show you in a very overview sort of way how I'm seeing it. And then I'll actually show you the screen, how I look at it on the screen, because it's really, really fascinating to see how this plays out uh, on the screen. So I'm going to put a nine there for Sagittarius. So I'm going to draw Saturn and Ketu on here. So how I look at transits, guys, is I actually do it on the wheel. And I do it on the wheel because I've got the sun about here and what am I going to say? We kind of like March through to, I'm going to put December here. And I'll show you on the screen as well. I'll bring the camera around. Um, I, I look at transits via the wheel. And I think that's probably because of years of watching Rick Levine and how he'll have his screen up and he's clicking through the wheel. And I got really accustomed to that. So when I got my Parashara's Light software, yes, I do everything on the um, diamond boxes, but transits I read on the wheel. It's, it's so much fun. And I'll, I'll show you, I'll bring the camera around so you'll be able to see. So what we've got is, and when I bring this, uh, the camera to show you, you'll see we've got Saturn Ketu conjunct here. So Rahu is kind of out here. Uh, well, it's actually a little bit more this way if it's an Aries moon. So let's put the one Aries moon. But Sagittarius, right? I think that's... I was doing this on the... Um, let's have a look here. I was doing this on a Taurus moon. So my, yeah, the number nine is uh, perhaps not, not where it should be, maybe. Let's have a look. 
it's not too bad. No, that's quite good. All right, it's okay. Don't worry, I'll bring the camera around as well. So we're going to have these two conjunct and, and Saturn's going to go retrograde and it's going to take that all the other planets are going to travel around. It's fascinating. So we're going to have the sun and all the entire gang. They're all going to come around here. And then by the end of the year, we're talking December 2019, uh, December, January, even January 2020, we're going to have the Sun, we're going to have Venus, we're going to have Mars, we're going to have Jupiter, we're going to have everybody all here. And we're going to have Rahu all alone out here. It's fascinating. In fact, why don't I bring the camera over now so that you can see precisely what I'm talking about. Right, so you can see my setup here. This is just an Aries moon ordinary chart, nothing to it. I haven't, um, it's a made up person basically, so there's no privacy or any of that. You can see all my transit charts here. So I've been doing some transit work today. Uh, so let's have a look. We've got, um, so we want to be looking at the outer rim. These are the moving planets. The interior rim is the birth chart and that's fixed. But this is a made up person so we're not even looking at that. We're purely looking at the outside planets. So you can see Saturn and Ketu right here. And now I'm going to click up through the months. We've got end of March here, 2019. I'm going to click up and you see they're retrograde. he's retrograde. They're really stuck together. They're really nice and close. And now you see all these outer planets. They are moving. So I'll go back a little bit. You'll see the sun moving. So about March the sun is up here. And the whole gang, they're all kind of spread a bit. But if we move everything through, you'll see they're all moving, moving, moving. And Jupiter's kind of over here, close by, close to the conjunction. And then they're all going to move through. And have a watch of this. December, 22nd December 2019. Everybody is here in this outer uh, rim. And we've got Rahu out here alone, completely alone. And everybody, so this is December, I'm going to click up one month more as well because you'll see that just continues. Venus is moving quite fast, Venus and Mercury are quite fast there, but you can see the whole cluster are hanging out here. So what does this mean for all of us, right? That, that you know, that Saturn and Ketu are, are together alone for quite a bit. Yes, all the planets are moving around, but what does this mean for us? Right. This is the interpretation and this is where I'm observing reality, I'm observing what's going on, I'm putting it all together, I'm thinking about Saturn K2 charts that I've seen, I'm thinking about all kinds of different things to come up with, you know, a, a, a possible interpretation. And what I'm seeing is I think that this Saturn K2 conjunction is going to be, is going to offer us another surge of awakening and kind of intellectual enlightenment right because it's happening in Sagittarius and I've got a note here that this surge of awakening and light to come through our man-made systems of thought through governance and through the history that's being written right now all of these things are very very Sagittarian in nature and And I think we need to break it down. So let's have a look at my notes. I am going to, okay. So we're gonna enter the part where I talk about how this affects us globally. So if you've clicked onto this part, welcome. Thanks for joining. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a look at an interpretation of this mars k conjunction and how I see it playing out globally and for the collective consciousness for all of us as a whole. Last year, the big news was a mars k conjunction, and I talked a lot about that, and I likened, well, I linked that in to the Me Too movement that was playing out here on the planet. That was really big in the news last year. The hashtag was really big, and I remember checking, I, I think I checked on Wikipedia, when did the Me Too movement start, and I was able to see that, yes, it did correlate with the movements of Mars and Saturn, and I believe, with Mars and Ketu, sorry, and I believe Saturn as well. Um, it it kind of linked into all those three. So I read Mars-Ketu conjunction as 
linking into the Me Too movement that was happening in the feminine sign of Capricorn. It was women who were speaking up and it was women who were being listened to. They were being given the spotlight on the world stage, which again is Capricorn. Um, another thing I found, you know, while working with individual charts is a Mars Ketu conjunction. You don't want to argue with those people because they're probably right. You know, and if they are speaking up and if they are having a fight, they are probably very much in the right. And I think I see that. I see that women were very much in the right to speak up and they needed to be heard. Um, everything that was being said was so relevant and so important. So that was a really interesting conjunction. Now this year, Mars K2 conjunction is over. This year we've got the Saturn K2 conjunction. And how am I reading this one? Okay, so I'm going to go for the following. <laughs> uh, this is just my interpretation, but I see Saturn in this instance as being the worker, the everyday person, right? Not a member of the elite. So Saturn, the worker, the everyday person, that's me, you know? And, and the, the kind of elite person that I was thinking of is um, if you're like a really top in business person and, you know, because um, I'd seen a, an interview of Karl Lagerfeld and he was saying that, oh yeah, Brexit's a terrible idea. And I was thinking, yeah, well, that, that's an interesting viewpoint. And I thought you would think that it's a terrible idea because, you know, if you're running a global empire as he is, um, a few days of interruption would mean millions of pounds down the drain kind of thing, or, or, or they would lose millions of pounds or, you know, any form of disruption they don't want. And, you know, he's, he's got a private jet, very comfortable life, moves about freely and easily. So you want to keep the game the same. And if you're not one of those people, then you've got time on your hands and you're the everyday worker and you think more deeply and you want change. And I definitely think that's what's happening in this country People want change, you know, and um, I've been trying to see how this works with Brexit. So, but let's, I'll keep going through the notes one at a time. So I've got Saturn plus Ketu. What does it mean? Saturn in this instance is the worker. Ketu, right? What are the connotations of Ketu? There are many. Uh, there's enlightenment. This thing of being, uh, often people say cloudy, smoky, foggy. Uh, one of the reasons why I chose to wear this kind of grey colourless item today, I thought, yeah, let's get some K2 clothing going on here. So, um, But in this instance, I'm also I'm looking at this in terms of darkness. And I'm interpreting this as darkness, that K2 is the darkness, it's the past, and Rahu is the light. Rahu is where we need to go. We need to follow the light. You know, and, and, and sometimes it's terrifying to go into the light because you'll be seen and, you know, you're vulnerable and uh, sometimes you don't want to be seen because you think, well, I'm not perfect. And there's all these issues that come up and, and, and you know, so there's, that's a whole Rahu story. But let's stay with Ketu. So we've got Saturn the worker, we've got Ketu the darkness. And recently on, um, apologies if you can hear that siren, by the way happens all the time. What is it? It's six, six in the evening. So uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe someone stole like a Greg's vegan, vegan sausage roll. Anyway, um, <laughs> anyway, uh, recently we had Theresa May in the news saying that the history books are being written. And I thought, yeah, that is a, that is a beautiful statement by her. She says the, the history books are being written. They are absolutely being written. But I'm going to say that I think they're being, there's an opportunity for them to be rewritten in the darkness, hopefully by we the people. That's what I'm hoping. Um, every, you know, each and every one of us needs to wake up more to what's happening in the collective. And what I see this, conjunction as offering to the collective is, is an opportunity for us to cover old ground in terms of how we think the world has been built and I think that there's going to be new surges of awakening. I think more people are going to wake up to how the world really is structured, um, who's running it 
uh, you know, what is what is government? Is it for real? You know, um, or is it a show? You know, what what's the deal here? And there are a couple of links that I want to point you to. I've got um, one that I think you, you, viewers in the United States will really like. It's a link to Marianne Williamson. Um, she's running, and I saw I don't know which one. I saw a few, a handful of clips. So. Um, recently she was on CNN and I was like, wow, that's, wow, okay, this is good. And I could see he was kind of grilling her and giving her a bit of a hard time. But the fact that they had her on, I just think is fantastic. I think that is, yeah, that's really, really great progress. So I'm really happy because last year I saw a clip of her. Um, she was on a some kind of TV show in the United States and all the comments below were just saying she's a crazy lady and don't vote for her and I felt so bad I felt awful and um, you know but when I looked at the CNN one anyway the link the comments below were pretty good and I thought hey this is good I felt really positive so so that's very positive because she's a highly Saturnian type of a lady I did check her chart some time ago I haven't checked it recently but you can see it in the build of her her bone structure and, and, and um, you know, that thin wiry frame, air, creative, vata, right? So you can see that in, in the build of her. Uh, for, for viewers in the United Kingdom, um, and if you're more into the European news and what's going on here in Europe, I will link to a mini documentary about the EU. Um, this was sent to me by someone who is super close to me and I totally respect her opinion on everything and she sent me this documentary at the time when I was formulating my thoughts on Saturn K to conjunction. So I thought mm -hmm. it was really interesting that that link came to me and then I watched it and I thought yeah actually I am going to be talking about some of this kind of thing. Um, I've got a note here that the lines can be blurred a lot more in terms of say for example what we think as left and right. I was thinking about that um, just before sitting down to do this video that you know when I was a kid growing up you could you knew what left and right was politically and um, and you know I wasn't afraid to say it I was like yeah I'm a lefty I was lefty from my teenage years when I was able to first vote and you know um, I was able to say that you know and but now it's like it's too blurry it's too difficult to say that you're one or the other and in fact you don't want to say that you're one or the other. I definitely don't want to say that I'm one or the other. Uh, it's not, I can't say what I am because I watch all different things and uh, it's a very confusing time. So I feel like this is going to rub out those lines even more potentially. That, that's one of the things that I'm seeing. I think the last time I did click through and I had a look at the last time we had this conjunction, I think it was happening in uh, Leo if I'm correct and I think that was 2007 2008 and I think there was trouble in the financial markets at that time and that's appropriate because that's um, running on that axis where the stock market is this time though it's running on this axis where I'm seeing the government so that's yeah that's one of the things I'm thinking and that's why one of the thoughts I had was that if Britain wants Brexit and wants a proper Brexit I feel like um, it, you'd want to do it during this conjunction. You'd, you'd want to somehow get it done. And I don't know. And it, it feels like in a quiet sort of way, you want to slip out somehow. I don't know. I think the EU, it would be in the EU's interest, in fact, to delay, 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 delay. So for EU, and I, I think, you know, if, if you're on the EU side and you're one of the elite, it would be in your interest very much to keep kicking the can down the road and um, to keep delaying and, and to keep trying to make it very difficult. Uh, so if, if you're on that side, that's what you, you wanted, your strategy should be. And if you're on the side of the people, uh, I totally understand. And yes, you want change and you want any kind of change. And I totally get that. So it's to be seen. I don't particularly want to call it one way or the other. Um, Ketu is the body without the head. So, and I, I think I did read out this note about the surge of awakening and light needs to come through our man-made systems of thought, through governance, through the history that's being written right now. 
Absolutely. Ketu is the body without the head, right? So we, we all know that story. We love and know that story that Rahu is just the head and Ketu is, is the body without the head. So I have a note here that um, globally we need to see the world with our heart or through our heart um, and, and feed that information to Rahu the head, the practical, you know, which is in the practical place of Gemini. Um, yeah, our actions will need to be practical, courageous, and heartfelt during that time. And this concept of seeing through the heart is something that you can turn to Greg Braden for. He is brilliant at talking about this. He spent time, I think, with um, Buddhist monks. I'm just going to check how I'm doing for time. Uh, yes, I am going on and on a bit. Uh, so the camera is probably going to stop working in a couple of minutes. So I'll just share this quickly. Greg Braden did a wonderful um, talk. I think it was in Italy. It was like four hours long or something like that. You can find it on YouTube, but definitely um, you can search something like Greg Braden, heart, seeing through the heart, something like that, because he was with Buddhist monks, I'm pretty sure, in Tibet, uh, somewhere there. And he was in that region and they talked about the fact that, you know, you can actually see through the heart. Like, it, it, you know, you've got another set of eyes there. And scientifically, he's been able to show that, you know, they have neurological cells. We all have neurological cells in our heart. Um, it's just incredible. So, you know, I think we are going to need to turn to our spiritual teachers a bit during this time to help us get through. So what does this mean for us personally? Apologies, guys, the camera got cut, as it tends to do. So I took the opportunity to just get what was on the memory card and I'm just going to make sure I put it on the hard drive so I don't lose that file. Let me just make sure that I'm plugged in and this is all working. It's all working. Right, so what does this mean for us personally? What does this Saturn Ketu or Ketu Saturn, I don't know which one I'm going to go for. I think I'm going to go for Ketu Saturn, actually. Um... I feel there's more emphasis on the Ketu this time. I don't know why that is, but I do. Uh, how is this going to manifest for you personally? What's this going to look like in your everyday life? I'm very interested in this. And we'll be observing this as we go along, and we will be discussing this conjunction in the monthlies as well. So it's something that I, I will keep touching on throughout the year because I'm very interested in um, really understanding how this transit plays out in our lives. Now, I suspect um, there will be two types of people who are particularly going to feel uh, this conjunction and that will be if you have a strong Saturn. What does it mean to have a strong Saturn? Okay, so you've got um, Saturn as your ascendant, so you know you're either Capricorn or uh, Aquarius ascendant, something like that. Um, perhaps you've got Saturn conjunct Sun or Moon, perhaps you've got Saturn conjunct several planets, something like that. Um, maybe Saturn is on your Rahu Ketu line, right? Um, and perhaps there's a Saturnian aspect on your ascendant. Other um, people who are quite affected by um, Saturn is when Saturn is like the lord of a, your ascendant nakshatra as well. I've seen that having a real impact on, on people. So if you're quite the Saturnian, then you're definitely going to feel some impact here. Um, same goes for Ketu. If you've got Ketu in your ascendant, uh, Ketu conjunct lots of planets, um, or conjoined uh, sun or moon or a Ketu base nakshatra or any of that kind of thing um, you know you'll definitely feel something around this conjunction what are you likely to feel this is what's really interesting and I've been thinking a lot about it today um, I'm going to say that you might find that it's a bit of a quieter time I don't have anything too exciting to predict here. Nothing kind of, um, I mean, look at these two, you know, they're kind of, they're kind of um, a bit slow. Saturn's, Saturn's slow. And, and Ketu, I mean, look, Ketu, if you read Ketu as being Mars, could that be frustration? And that's, um, this is an old Rick Levine principle where he talks about, you know, Saturn's, the gas, I think they say in America, the accelerator, we'd, we'd probably say here, so, you know, the accelerator and, oh, hang on, no, no Mars is the accelerator and, and Saturn's the brakes, go slow, right? So it's like this, this kind of a thing going on. Um, 
so that it could be a little bit of a, a recipe for some mild frustration uh, my notes that I've got here I mean I, I'm kind of saying quite a time things may move more slowly than usual the other thing uh, people often read Ketu as being Pisces so and that's why I'm getting this kind of foggy disintegration the blurring of you know what's left what's right nobody knows um, that's where I'm getting that from I've got a note here that good idea to have a long-term back burner project on so is there something that you can be creating over time and good projects for that are things like writing a book um, maybe you're creating a business plan maybe you're working with other people you're planning a community that you want to create or I'm not sure but you know um, it's a really good time to be planning and strategizing I definitely think 2020 is going to be a freer year we don't have anything stuck on the nodes uh, I had a look today and it, it's looking like you know the movement's going to be freer and easier and more balanced we're not going to have too many of these conjunctions and as we saw you know I don't know if you watched if you've just clicked onto this and you didn't watch the other bit um, one of the things I mentioned was that from December 2019 I'll bring this up again why not December 2019 through so well this is March oh, hang on no yeah that's to um, what, January 2020 Jan even Feb 2020 so we've got our to 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 fill you in if you if you're new you've just clicked on the link to be here to just watch this part we've got Saturn K to conjunct um, in March 2019 all the planets Sun Venus Mars everybody Jupiter's hanging out here hang on how do we Jupiter oh I've forgotten there we go that'll do for Jupiter um, we've got Sun we've got Venus we've got Mars we've got the whole gang they're all flying around here and then they're all going to congregate here at around Jan Feb 2020 December 19 to Jan Feb 2020 we're going to have like all of them they're all going to be here and Rahu's going to be out here alone that I just that's going to be a really exciting time. I feel like I want to do a video just for that, but not now. I think I'm going to see how the how the um, how all of this plays out. But why did I bring that up? Well, I brought that up to say that 2020 is going to be a bit more free. Basically, they're all hanging out here with Ketu, but then they're all going to break up and they're all just going to move, and and we're not going to have too many. Uh, of these kind of conjunctions I should have checked the year after as well but I'm pretty sure the movement's a lot freer so you know I, I still see that this year is um, yeah it's not going to be all all systems are go I think 2020 onward is, is going to mark a change um, and I'm starting to look into that now so yeah so let's have a look here um, I've got a note here business people may notice that um, they don't get as much business right and I know that's not a nice thing to say <laughs> nobody wants to hear that but um, your business could take a little dip or there could be a bit of a drop in earnings or, or drop in incoming clients or that kind of thing um, the reason I say this is because I was on a Skype call with one of my clients and he was saying that April September of last year was super quiet for him business wise and I, and I, off the top of my head, I was just like, oh, Saturn retrograde. I'm like, and then I checked the dates on, um, on the transit thing. And sure enough, yeah, Saturn was, I mean, I remember, but like, you know, and, and, and so he was Saturn sensitive, right? He noticed that way more business came to him October onwards. I noticed that too. I always noticed that around that retrograde time, uh, I've been observing over the last few years and I've been seeing, oh, wow, I don't get as much work at that time. So that's why, you know, um, I tend to put myself to good use writing books and doing other things. So, you know, um, I've always got projects on and yeah, I've definitely, definitely got that writing project I want to do this year. So um, I've got a note here that you might be squeezed in some way. This conjunction might feel like you're being squeezed. 
right? So one thing I would say is be financially conservative around that April to September time if you are Saturn sensitive. That's just a kind of, well, let's have a look actually is when is, when is the retrograde on? Let me just give you that quickly now. I should have looked that up before. Um, hang on, let's, take, let's go back from 2020. When is it retrograde? Okay, so looks like August, September. So kind of, we're kind of looking at mid-September. He's in retrograde. Oh, hang on. Okay, April. I think it's going to be, yeah, kind of, okay, May. May to, it's about May. Yeah, I'd say May through to mid-September, he's retrograde. So that is a time to be a little bit financially conservative if you are Saturn sensitive, um, for example. But we are definitely gonna look at this together as, as the months go on. And, and you know, if I need to rejig anything, I certainly will. Um, I've got a note here, good time to feel with your heart uh, and restructure your life from a heart-based perspective. Now, the reason I say that is because we're dealing with Ketu, the body, without the head right so just the body take the head off and you're left with the body and to me when I think about what is the smartest thing that we have when you cut the head off well it's the heart you know and I, I think even when the head's on sometimes the heart is the smartest thing there as well so um, definitely definitely this is a time to to if you're finding if you're finding that things are slow if you're finding that this is affecting you in some way if you're finding that there's frustration you're getting that Mars Saturn stop start thing happening and frustration is building if you've got any of that going on you've really got to feel with your heart and start to look at your life and think is this really making me happy is my life really making me happy is this really what I want to do long term and that's these are the people who are being squeezed if you are following your life path and your passion and what you want to do you may feel squeezed right you may feel like oh, this is just too hard you know keep going keep going believe in your heart keep going and I've got here yeah restructure your life from a heart-based perspective keep at it if that's what you're doing and you're being squeezed don't worry you'll be all right and keep asking for divine guidance you know ask your angelic team to help you I believe in all that stuff I believe in anything positive and empowering that's my rule so um, and equally if anything I've said here is not empowering or positive I have a note here for that as well good time to be reading Joseph Murphy practicing all the law of attraction techniques and I'll leave a link to his book below so that you can um, pick that one up. It's, uh, I think it's called The Power of the Subconscious Mind. I think I have mentioned it in another video somewhere. So if ever there's anything that comes to you that's a bit negative, that, oh, darn, you know, she said that I'm not going to have as much business this year. No, don't feel bad about that. Feel, okay, I've got to get my head into that book and I have to manifest what I want through another system I've got to get really good at the law of attraction don't forget we've got free will and free will and destiny according to Michaela Sheldon they are both equal they both happen at the same time so that's what I always do if I always if, if I hear something negative in a prediction or an astrological thing um, I don't worry about it too much or I drop it or I discard it or um, or I go to another system because you've got choice here, you know, you can always go to the Western system. Or, you know what I do? I'll go and read my Chinese New Year. I did that actually because I was like, oh, this Rahu Ketu change in March is not so great for me. So then I went and looked at my um, Chinese astrology and I was like, this is a great year. So it's like, you know, I'll just keep looking at different systems until I get some good news. <laughs> but um, but honestly, I, I don't, you know, a quieter time and things happening slowly, I don't see that as bad at all. I think... Um, and that's why I love working with Saturn now. I absolutely love working with Saturn. I love developing patience and seeing myself as time rich as opposed to uh, experiencing delays. So guys, I'm going to leave you with all that. Now, if you want to see it even more personally, you know, yes, we're in the personal section here, but if you want to see for your moon sign, um, which house this conjunction is playing out in, then I'll leave that in the description below. So be sure to click on, click open that description below and have a look at what's there. There'll be other links and things for you to have a look at. So I really hope you've enjoyed this video and 
We're going to talk about this conjunction some more as, as the year goes on. Uh, I look forward to your comments, you know, and do let me know how this is manifesting for you. I'm, I'm really eager to, to hear that. And I'll see you next time.